Hi, this is the supplemental optional video explaining what these ray diagrams that you see in the textbook and what you glimpse in the previous couple videos are all about. Once again, none of this material will be on the exam, so it's not required, but I am providing this video for those who are interested. Okay, so I am going to first start out with a bit of a simulation, courtesy of PHET, fat.colorado.edu. You can search for geometric optics simulation there, and you'll see the same simulation there. So I will use this simulation to illustrate where these rays in ray diagram comes from. Okay, so this is where the simulation starts. Let me change the um, object a little bit. Let me change it to a screen, which also changes the object uh, to a lamp, which I hope is more intuitive. And let me get rid of all the rays, because in real life, you don't actually see the rays. So this is what I have here. I have a lamp um, in some space here. I have placed the lens here. And with the lens here, focusing the light from the lamp, when I place a screen after the lens, then I get a little circle of light. As I move the screen closer or farther away, this circle gets bigger or up to the size of the lens. I can make the lens bigger to make the circle bigger. Or it gets smaller. Now, as you move this screen farther and farther out, you see there's one spot where the beam gets as small as possible. So this is what you see as you do this experiment. And when you move it farther away, the beam starts getting bigger. So one way of illustrating that is by imagining rays of light coming from this object. That's illustrated the best by the many rays option. This is the, these rays are schematic representation of the physical rays of light coming from the, the light bulb. So there are many rays of light coming out. Not all of them intersect the lens, but some that do intersect the lens, they bend in such a way that they bend towards the axis, this is a converging lens. That's what converging lens does. And they are brought to a focus at some point. Now, in this lens, these points marked X are meant to be the focal point. So why is the focus forming so much later than the focal point? That's because the incoming rays of light here, they are not parallel rays. They have to be close to parallel for these rays to come to focus um, at the focal point. So to do that, I can place the lamp farther and farther and farther away. Um, let me actually move this lamp around a little bit to see what happens to light rays that do come in parallel. If I move this up a little bit here, then I can start to get some rays that are almost parallel. So here's a ray that's almost parallel. This almost parallel ray um, bends in such a way that it almost goes through this focal point. This is where this principal rays option is uh, better. So let me pick this principal rays option here. So with the many rays, you can imagine that there are these many, many rays. And of those, a fraction goes through the lens. Now of that fraction, there are very special three rays that are easy to predict in what direction they will bend after they go through the lens. So that's what principal rays are showing. So one of those principal rays is the ray that's parallel to the axis. That ray, by how we define the focal length, goes through the focal point. Um, uh, so that this ray crosses the axis at the location of the focal point. That's the principal ray number one. Principal ray number two is the ray that goes through the center of the lens. This ray actually doesn't get reflected at all. In the center, the lens kind of looks like a flat piece of glass. So it does refract as it enters the lens. It refracts again as it exits the lens. But the angle before and after remains the same. So this ray is undeflected. And um, that's actually all you need. If you have two rays, that's enough for you to determine where they will cross and where the focus will form. That is enough. But if you wanted to double check the result, 
um, you can have this third redundant principal ray. So the third redundant principal ray, it goes through the focal point on the other side of the lens. And then after having gone through that point, as it goes through the lens, it comes out so that it's a parallel to the axis. It's a sort of a mirror counterpart to the first principal ray. That's another reason it's kind of redundant. So, so that's principal ray. And I will tell you the principal ray is a little bit abstract. Uh, these rays do not actually have to physically exist. I mean, imagine a much smaller lens. As in, there is no ray that actually goes here and crosses the lens. There's no lens here. But we still draw this anyway. Because the purpose of the principal ray is to reveal where the focus will be. And the many rays will actually show, uh, all right, it doesn't really show. Or marginal rays will show the rays that barely make it through the lens. So when we draw principal rays, we don't really pay attention to the actual size of the lens because, um, because it doesn't matter. We just, um, principal, the pur purpose of principal rays is to determine where the uh, these rays come to focus so that you can determine where the image will be. Okay, now let me switch back to the other object. Instead of a screen, now I have an object, like a pencil. Or uh, the object I usually like to draw is an arrow. So here's an arrow. So this is what, it, what the ray diagram looks like at different locations of the object. As I move this object around, I want you to notice how principal ray number one and principal ray number two obey the rules that I just described. As in, principal ray number one is always drawn in such a way that it comes in parallel to the axis as I move this object around. Um, principal ray number two is always drawn in such a way that it always goes through the middle of the lens. Now, after having gone through the lens, they are always drawn in such a way that the ray number one goes through the focal point, ray number two goes undeflected. And the image is located where these rays do come together. Now, you might notice that as I move this object closer and closer and closer to the focal point, that the image gets farther and farther away. What happens if I go beyond the focal point? Well, these rays, they actually never come together. You see that they are diverging. These diverging rays, um, well, they will not form a real image. So the image that has been forming so far, this is what we call real image. These are the potentially the actual rays that's going through the lens, like these physical rays. They are actually going through the lens, and they're actually coming together here. That's why when I placed the screen there, you saw that nice spot. Now. When this object is too close, they never come to a focus. So there is no real image. But instead, it can form a virtual image. So let me click virtual image and show the virtual image. So this is the virtual image. You might notice that the rays here look a little bit different. Even with the many rays, rays here look a little bit different. And it's because these are not real rays. The real rays follow these white lines. It's so coming from the object. Um, these are the reflected light, uh, light reflecting off of from the object. The light rays come out this way. Some of them get, uh, go through the lens, and they bend after having gone through the lens. Now, to find these green rays, what you do is you take these outgoing rays, and you extend it backward to see where they appear to be coming from. Now, as you keep extending it backward, 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 all those rays, all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them, appear to come from a single point. That's where we say, okay, those rays appear to be coming from there. So as we look at this object through this lens, we locate the image over here. It's a virtual image because the light rays don't actually really go through the image. Um, with a computer simulation, we can do these many rays, but I can't do this by hand. So that's where we use principal rays. The same rule still applies. Principal ray number one still follows the same rule. Principal ray number two still follows the same rule. And what I do is I take these rays, extend it backward, 
and where they appear to cross is where I still locate the image. Um, while I had the simulation, let me demonstrate with the screen. So here's the screen. So now, as I move the screen around, <coughs> excuse me. So as I move the screen around here, you see this dot, um, you see the circle of light. Now it does, it's actually getting bigger, so it's not going to come to a focus. And the program doesn't let me do that, but if I were to place the screen over here on the other side, I would actually see no circle at all because uh, light rays don't actually go through there. So, so this is the basis of ray tracing. So when we do ray tracing, uh, what we do is we only draw these principal rays. And as I illustrate this ray tracing in three different examples that you actually have seen, I will draw only these two rays. That's all I need to work out the geometry to derive that lens equation formula and to illustrate the lateral magnification formula that you have seen. Oh, before I leave, let me show you one more thing that I can show with this um, simulation. So in this simulation, all you have seen is where does this single point, where does this a single point come to a focus? The tip of the arrow here comes to a focus here. So uh, why would I say that it forms an inverted uh, arrow instead of an arrow that's moved down? Well, um, you can imagine doing the same thing with many other points along this object. Let me just do it for one second point. If I take one second point here and see where it forms a focus, it actually forms a focus here. Well, it used to be below the first point. Now it's above the first point. So that tells you the orientation of the object. In fact, if the second point is, is ray at the bottom, then you know that the image when you form it, it's going to be along the axis. So this is the physical basis I wanted to talk about, making use of the simulation. And, and with the whiteboard, let me sh uh, show you in detail what the ray tracing for those three examples involving lens that you saw in chapter 17 exercises video actually looks like if you do it in detail.